I'm an attorney in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. What keeps me busy every day is my rescue pup, Rico. He loves to watch me fish. And he really appreciates life. I practice a lot of corporate law, but I also practice uh, healthcare law, helping advocate for 30 million Americans with rare diseases like myself. My name is Candace, and I've been diagnosed with immune thrombocytopenia, or ITP. Immune thrombocytopenia, it's an autoimmune disorder, and therefore your own immune system produces antibodies that will lead to the destruction of platelets. Platelets work with proteins in the blood to make the blood clot. The result is that you have low levels of platelets and you have an acquired bleeding disorder. So in 2014, I started to notice odd symptoms that didn't match up. My lower legs were covered in thousands of little pinprick dots that were bright red or purple. I was also experiencing these large bruises that are also known as hematomas. They were extremely painful and they covered my legs all over from top to bottom. So the legs are covered with small petechiae, little red spots which are microvascular bleeds. And that combined with bruises are the hallmark of the skin manifestations of ITP. My family talked me into going to see my gynecologist because they were very concerned about these giant bruises. Gynecologists make this diagnosis frequently because patients present often with iron deficiency anemia from such heavy periods and low platelets. So I went to the gynecologist and she took one look at me and said, this is a job for a hematologist, but let's draw your blood and see what's going on. So she called me at work the next day and she said to me, Candace, your platelets are at 7,000. You need to get to an emergency room or you're going to die. I walked into the emergency room. I handed them the results from my blood work the day before, and within two minutes, a group of people came to take me back into the ER. I spent six days in the hospital. I had no answers. I felt like I was watching my life just slip from me and it was completely and totally out of control. Almost all patients want to know, why did I get this disease? That is a question that we can't answer because it can occur in almost anyone of any ethnic or genetic background, but they need some trigger that probably brings it forward. Having a rare disease makes getting that diagnosis and proper care really difficult. It's in fact a diagnosis of exclusion. If the platelets fall below 100,000 and you cannot define another cause, then you assume the patient has immune thrombocytopenia. But you always confirm it as a hematologist by looking at the blood smear under the microscope. When I was diagnosed with ITP, I seriously questioned if life was worth living. ITP took everything from me. It had taken my independence. It took away my financial security. It stole the career I was building. I was anxious. I was scared. I was worried. Then I became angry. I asked a lot of questions like, why me? Why now? Why this? At some point, I finally switched from being fearful to wanting revenge and wanting control and wanting to figure out exactly what was wrong with me and how to stop it. I didn't want to just live with ITP, I wanted to beat it. When you're living with low platelets, you realize that there is a possibility that you could bleed to death and that can be really scary. All I've ever known is having ITP. When I was four years old I had a lot of bruises, black bruises on my body and my mother knew something wasn't right. She took me to one doctor and then another and I was diagnosed with ITP. 
Not a lot was known about it at the time. They knew that this was something that they had to be very cautious about. I couldn't be rough and tumble type of a child. I guess it's kind of like living with a force field around me because anything intruding into that little force field could damage you or could bruise you or injure you. When I was diagnosed, really the only treatments that were available were steroids and a splenectomy. And the first treatment they gave me, of course, was steroids. And then they stopped working. Uh, they didn't raise my platelet count anymore. Corticosteroids alone is really effective in inducing long-term remissions in 15 to 18 percent of individuals treated with steroids. Historically, patients who failed to respond adequately to steroids or patients who uh, relapsed coming off of steroids, the only treatment available was to remove the spleen. So when I was seven, I had a splenectomy, and that worked for three months. It elevated my platelet count. But after three months, my count dropped again. I just lived with a low platelet count. And not until, I think, my late teens was there another treatment available. Splenectomy, I think, has become a last resort. Anytime you're dealing with an immune-related process, you use agents that would inhibit the immune attack. Steroids are the first line. If the platelets are very low and if there are bl significant bleeding manifestations, an agent that is interesting that frequently works in about 70% of patients to rapidly raise the platelet count is intravenous immunoglobin. Now we have these agents called thrombopotent receptor agonists. And what they do is they stimulate increased platelet production from the bone marrow and compensate for the shortened survival of the platelets that are coated with antibodies. And they are effective in at least raising the platelet count to a safe level in 70 to 80% of patients who receive them. The disease is treatable and frequently responsive. The American Society of Hematology revised its guidelines on the diagnosis and management of immune thrombocytopenia. And that resource is, is routinely available for physicians and even patients to look at and to talk to their doctor about what the guidelines say as their approach to treatment. I'll say up front when I see a patient that I can never tell them exactly what's going to work for them. I ended up researching possible treatment options and I figured out that I fit into a class of patients where this particular treatment may work best for me. So I went back to my doctor and I told him what I wanted to do and he said to me, that was the treatment that I was going to recommend for you too. We did the treatment and it was declared a success on December 18th, 2014. And so I considered that day as my second birthday. <laughs> there are patients that can have long-term remissions, but many of them can relapse later on. I was in remission from December 2014 to March 2019. I lived a very normal life, and I was able to pursue a law degree. I also found it really important to connect with other ITP patients so that I knew I wasn't alone and that I could sort of get the support I needed when I was going through those really dark times. I grew up knowing that I had ITP, but I had never met anybody else with ITP. I was surfing the web and I typed in ITP thinking, okay, maybe I'll find something. And I found this website, PDSA. It stood for Platelet Disorder Support Association. I start looking at it and I'm realizing this is about people that have ITP. When I talk to a person, it's like... The Platelet you know, Disorder Support Association has encouraged support groups. And, they and reach so out to I people. It's know. really worth going it's to them. Uh, I myself occasionally go to some of them so they can talk to a, a quote, ITP expert. 
And I think that is really one of the best issues to talk to other people who have the disease. You want to know that somebody's there to support you and help you through this. And, and that they're going through the same thing as well. Right. It becomes a lifelong, lifelong condition that you know, can create and many times does create a lot of anxiety. Doctors realize they can't treat just the disease without treating the symptoms, and some of the symptoms are quality of life issues, right? Right before I started my ITP treatment that put me in remission, I decided that this was my opportunity to start changing things. Two months after I was declared in remission, I went to Washington, D.C. for Rare Disease Week. And I ended up getting involved with the 21st Century Cures Act. I believe that every ITP patient deserves to have a treatment that works for them, not just to raise their platelet count, but to also improve their quality of life. I am hopeful that there will be something in the future that will work, work for me. So I manage my life now like I've always managed it. I'm very careful. I think that the prognosis gets better each year. The promise of a remission and a long-term remission, meaning adequate and normal platelet counts, I think is offered to the vast majority of patients with immune thrombocytopenia. So in many ways, the chronic ITP patient can live a pretty good lifestyle now. My life now with ITP is great. I'm currently in remission now for a second time. I know that no matter what I do, ITP is always lurking around the corner. But I'm not afraid of it now. It won't beat me, it won't outsmart me, and I'm going to overcome it. <laughs>